And hello, this is, uh, I'm Dilla Snake 74 uh, Right behind me there is Sin and uh, a friend of mine, and also another friend, friend of mine, Yo Andy. Primarily Ratchet Runners, but yeah, I probably <laughs> for this showcase. So yeah, uh, in these early morning hours in Europe, I'm running Pseudo Regalia, which is a game that released on, uh, well, it released last year, but it was made for a game jam. And it's a really nice, sick little game. Uh, Pretty much the main sale, selling point of this game is the movement tech, which you will see in the duration of this run, which it will take around, I would say, optimally below 12, 20 minutes. And then there is also an incentive has been met, has been met where I will do all eight time trials, uh, which, is, which is a feature that has been added in the latest patch of the game. I'm not running on the latest patch of the game. Uh, this is the previous patch, which has some of the, like, it has more broken movement tech. Let's put it that way. I'll explain it in more de <laughs> details later. Anyway, uh, I'm pretty much, yeah, I'm pretty much ready. So uh, yeah, without further ado, uh, we can start in three, two, one, go. Let's go, Dian. <laughs> okay, so basically we're starting off uh, without any abilities, so we can't do anything like sick and smooth looking until like roughly minute and a half into the run is where all hell breaks loose. Let's say that much. So for now, only all, all we can do is basically we're just walking and jumping around to pick up uh, the first two abilities. The first ability is pretty much already like right behind here. There we go. And this is the what we're going to pick up is the Dream Breaker. This is basically our primary weapon. Let's say let's say that much. It also has like some other properties which uh, are not really relevant for the speedrun, but I may or may not use them actually. But yeah, this is our primary like way of mostly just dealing damage. We're also gonna get some other abilities which are going to increase our damage output, but like all of that is gonna be used to, for the final boss of the game. There's like little to no fighting pretty much in the run until the final boss. Yeah, I know most of this game is just a platformer pretty much. Um, so what we're actually trying to do is we're trying to escape this castle. So I'm pretty sure most of the game is like it's gonna be kind of looking like this. Yep. Oh, that's a little unfortunate. And just to go over, this this is the all abilities category, correct? Yeah. So we're meant to collect every single ability in the run, and then we're also... Oh, what is happening? This is a strange thing to mess up. But yeah, basically this is the all abilities run. We're meant to collect every single ability of the run, and then also get all five major keys, which is what unlocks the final boss fight. Also, this is a no out of bounds category as well, because there is the auto bounds and a no auto bounds variation. So, basically, they're not allowed to leave the boundaries of the game or like collect through stuff, because that's also a tank. I'm not sure, but I think most of the tech I'm gonna do in the run is actually intended. I'm not sure if it was just like left in the game there for like speed running purposes. I have heard a thing or two about it, but I'm not like 100% sure. Anyway. This is light, and this is where we get to do all the cool stuff this game is about. We're so done, we get to we're do done walking like this. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, slide gives us basically two pieces of movement tech which are very important for us. One is called glide, hop, glide hopping, and the other one is called slide hopping. Glide hopping is what we use for speed, and slide hopping is what we use for height. So to get a, like, a slide hop, like... Like these big jumps, there's like two ways of activating them. We can do it them during the slide, and we can also do them if we have a lot of speed. We can just do a, we just flick the stick back and forth and press X, which allows us to basically do that sort of a air backflip. But yeah, like that's pretty much what it does. And this is gonna be our kind of primary piece of movement tech. We're also gonna use some other stuff we collect in the run, but this is like kind of what's used the most for like the. Until like, let's say the last two or three minutes of the run. Now we have the next ability, which is Ascendant Light. It's not really used much in the run, but we just collect it because it's the part of the category. Basically what Light does is... We get like, launched in the air every time we hit enemies. And uh, it also gives us light in the dark areas, but because uh, we're speedrunners, we know where to go. So we don't really need that ability for that. So I'm seeing you do these these slides, and then you're uh, continuing with the the momentum in, yeah. into the jumps. Yeah. So when you get a lot of speed, you can actually maintain that speed by bunny hopping, 
kind of, well, you can mostly maintain it, let's say, because you do lose like a bit of speed with every jump. But you still do maintain like a decent amount of speed. And that's pretty much the deal with this game. Uh, it's a lot about spacing because we're bunny hopping all the time. So, so if there is like a gap, I might need to like cut the, the jump short or just improvise to get across certain gaps. You'll see that in, in, in a moment because we're approaching an area where there will be a lot of gaps. Anyway, here's a little strat where we can just get here and then we're gonna fall down to just death abuse and get spawned at the top of this bridge. So yeah, I'm gonna... So I cut this jump like a little bit short just so I can make across this gap properly. And now this is my arch nemesis of the, of the whole run, let's say. That much. It's the tower climb. It's one of the... probably the section I reset in the most because it's very, very punishing and a small mistake can cost quite a lot. So we're going to do a few slide hops to basically get... Well, we're going to chain like a few slide hops. I need a good height for this one. There you go. Oh, that's strange. Okay, don't mess me up game now. Thank you. Okay, this is a very finicky one. I'm gonna try it. Nice. I'm gonna attempt a really, really cool strat here at the top that's gonna be really hard. There's no guarantee I'm gonna hit it, but I'm at least gonna try it. Okay, that is not enough speed. I'll just go for, for the alternative. Oh, and that can happen sometimes. Sometimes, on that very spot, Sybil just decides not to ledge grab. I do not know why, but it just happens. You can't get it now, thank you. Okay, that's like the toughest section of the whole game. Anyway. Good job, dude. Yeah, but basically there's like a really hard strat I can hit there. Uh, it lo looks really, really sick, but it's very, very difficult because there's so much into it. Like, you need to get a decent amount of speed to make it even work in the first place, and then you need a really good stick flick to... and a really good slide ultra to make it across. Oh, this is what I've been talking about spacing. Uh, my spacing was off there, so I end up falling down. Oh, what just happened? U6 also going like pretty hard right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slide hops have been patched. I do not know what to say. <laughs> okay, then we're out of the. We basically got Cling Gem, which is your average Prince of Persia Volrun type of ability. That's what I like to call it. People give these abilities all sorts of names. I've heard. I've seen all sorts of them from like all sorts of different names from different runners. But because I'm biased and I like Prince of Persia, I'm just calling it uh, the funny Prince of Persia will run ability. And here's our next ability already, Indignation. So earlier in the run, we built up the level the level 3 power, which basically in combination with the Indignation ability, uh, we basically deal, deal more damage at the level 3. And we're basically going to use this to shred the final boss much quicker. Because final boss is like one of the toughest parts of the run because it's... Very RNG dependent, so we like are hoping we get like a solid attack and she doesn't fly once we get to the final boss. And we're also going to use like a combination of a few different abilities to deal uh, good damage. But more on that when I actually come to the final boss. I, I know we're we're now in the library and uh, we're basically almost close. We're basically already at the spot where our next ability is have to break this glass. Also, Indignation, level 3, which deals more da damage, also helps with the... Uh... Oh. Uh, it also deals more damage on these barriers, because normally these barriers would take uh, more hits. But yeah, now we got something called... Uh, I'll just call it Kick. Easier that way. I don't really bother that much from the actual tech names. I'll just give them my own names, I guess. But kick is, uh, we can get a bit, bit more distance with it. So I can, I do kind of mostly use it for spacing. And it's also used for stuff such as, uh, well, it has like one very useful property and that's uh, kicking against the walls, which gives us more height. I'll use that uh, a few times in the run. And now we're going to head to the next area, which is, oh yeah, also pick up the small key, just unlock this door here, which leads into, into the next area. But basically, we're just go traveling to all sorts of different areas, following the optimal route, collecting every single ability, and also 
than picking up the major keys, which is something we're going to do later. Actually, once we pick up this next ability, we are going to start collecting the major keys. But yeah, right now there is like this uh, spot where we have to do some strange platforming to get to the ability. Oh, and uh, you two might actually, actually like this one, because I'm going to reference Russian Clank with this one. Ooh. But yeah, <laughs> this is Sunsetter. What it does is, we're, it's basically a ground slam, so seeing a new Andy and every single Russian Clank enjoyer, you can ima imagine it as uh, the Hyper Strike. It also allows us to do like a small backlit in air, but that's not used all that often, because it's pretty small. Okay, coming up is like one of my actually favorite sections of the run. So here, I'm going to get a... Get, get a slide hop, do a kick and a backflip, and then also do a coin jump to get across. Get to really do a really sick strat really soon, so... <clears throat> it's basically in the next room. This is only done once in a run, but it looks really cool, so... I'm gonna get a coin jump here, pull down, cling here, and then do this. So, to explain what happened there... There's one feature of the game that the game never tells you is actually possible, but if you drop the Dream Breaker out of your hands, and you ki you can actually kick it, and the thing with this game is You're that... You're too slow! <laughs> yeah, the thing with, it, with that is that uh, what it does is you can actually kick it, and because the tracking of the... When you kick the Dream Breaker is very, very powerful and very, very generous, it will actually locks onto the enemy in the distance and also hits the lever, which unlocks that like locked door and what happens afterwards is we're just gonna drop into uh, I like to call it Dark Eco, Jack and Dax reference, some people like to call it uh, Dagu and what it does is basically drop into Dagu and what happens is we get warped to our last checkpoint which is closer to where we have to go. I'm gonna get to the underbelly key now uh, yeah so we're returning to underbelly uh, if you miss this area I don't uh, it looks ugly that's basically where we just we're just gonna we're back here into like a completely different like part of underbelly let's say just to collect the key and then we're just gonna leave thankfully i hate this area so i'm gonna try to get across here nice and i'm gonna try to get a glide hop going i get here and then i'm gonna get a slide hop right there going jam and there, there's the second major key. Uh, now, basically, I'm just gonna backtrack the same way I came to get one more ability. And I think this is a perfect time for some messages because I, there is like a little bit before I backtrack to and get to our next spot. Yes, gladly. We have three uh, donations that came in. Uh, one from App uh, $115 from them. Whoa! And um, with a message, hello from the sleepy scheduling desk, getting my one donation in and trying to give Conquer the closest to a bad fur day as I can. Good luck to all the runners. And they chose the poll response for Diddy Kong Racing um, and chose Conquer as um, the character. They also contributed to the um, target uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2 Heroes vs. Villains Showcase. Thank you for $115. We also got a donation from Shore um, with a message at Nienatari. Hey, that's me. Uh, T-shirt bender. Thank you very much um, <laughs> for that donation. I agree, it's a very good T-shirt. <laughs> and they also contributed to the Paris Marseille Racing, the cursed controller. Same as the last donation I have here from Tux3 Jaw Mike. Um, which with a $25 donation saying, watching together with my wife and had to grab that the, the Firo magnet. Tell her to give me a kiss. One, three, one, four, three, meow. So I hope I said that right. And back to the runners. Okay, so in the meantime, I collected an ability called Strike Break, which is basically a charge attack. Uh, and it's basically gonna be like our, like one of the abilities we're gonna use for the final fight, which is something I mentioned before. Uh, now we're in theater, also one of my favorite sections of the game. Uh, if you were ever worried about that, those that axe room, uh, you, you, you need to be. It's very easy. Have a very specific lineup. Also another like very cool slide, slide hop there. Very precise because you have a limited amount of space and you're also like on the door frame, so like falling down by accident is like very easy. 
But yeah, this is also one place where we use uh, the charge attack. It's basically to break like specific types of barriers, which can only be broken with uh, sorry break. And we are basically gonna get uh, the theater key here and another ability. Ability is like right ahead of us. So it's like oh. It's right there. Nice. So this is the Soul Cutter. Um, I'm gonna explain a bit, bit about this because it's very interesting, I'd say. Uh, if I was doing this run a month ago, I would have used Soul Cutter on exactly two spots in the run, but over the past month, uh, both spots have been obsoleted, so I'm not gonna use it at all. So we basically just pick it up because uh, it's an all abilities category. So this is where we would usually use the Soul Cutter, but I found a skip here like last month where with some very smart platforming we can actually get to the other side without the usage of the Soul Cutter. There you go. And then the second spot would be like right across here. Can I get across here? Oh, yeah, it's a very precise light hop to do because there's not enough space. Well, there is, but like it's really, really tough. There you go. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hit the lever, I'm gonna line myself up, uh, and not do that, that's that's the wrong set of inputs, so I'm gonna do, align myself up again, whoop, uh, that is strange, uh, well I guess I can't do the strat because uh, there's something wrong with the controller, so I guess I'll just... Do actually use cutter. That's a little bit, and not what I expected to happen. And yeah, by the way, the, the, that's a new. That's a. I guess we can do that with kick, but it has not been used up until this point of the run. But it's basically uh, something we like to call reverse wall kicks. But basically, if we do like a wall kick while we're like uh, leaning against the wall, but we do the kick itself in the opposite direction. We're going to just get launched towards the wall itself because Sybil's coll collision gets stuck in the wall in a way, so like she gets kicked, back, uh, she gets actually kicked towards the wall and not like to the opposite direction of the wall. So I'm gonna try and get up here. Nice. It's a very tight because I need a really good slide up and also a combination of reverse wall kicks and the cling jump, which actually allows us to get up there. And we can basically become the, the key key. Okay, and so now let me do a, like, a quick count. We have only one more ability to pick, which is once we leave theater. And then we also uh, have two more keys to pick up, which we're basically just making like a... We're basically actually going to like to the place where the final boss is at this point. It's just that we're picking up the stuff along the way such as the route. I was not here for the early days of this game. Like, again, the game came last year, but I started running it, like, early this year. So, when, like, all the major routes happened, I was not there for it. Anyway, uh, this is the last ability we pick in the run, uh, Solar Wind. So, this is gonna replace our slide with the Solar Wind ability, so... My hand stick can take a bit of the rest from glide hopping, because... We just simply press L1 and then X of like any, like, like a very big window. It's not precise at all. Anyway, another instance of reverse wall kicks. A lot of the level design here looks like it's an absolute speedrunner's dream. With these uh, different abilities that you have, it seems like you have the complete kind of uh, option of exactly where you want to go. Yeah, basically the, the way the game is designed is you basically get like one ability and you lock like 50% of the game and then you will like get another ability and you're gonna lock like 70% of the game so you can like still access the same areas with the same like with those two abilities but with the new ability you can access some areas you can't with the previous one the gameplay is also just very very smooth yeah like it's a very retro style game and like I feel it like just if you're into that type of thing it's like it's basically if you like the retro style plus the cool moment, this is just a game for you. Yeah, it's very satisfying watching like kind of all the movement come together. Also, a new piece of tech here, it's only used once in a run, and that's called uh, 
Solo King Wolf. Uh, Solo King Kick. So I just call it Wind Kicks. That's yeah. that way. I don't even know if this track has an act. The tech has an act, like an actual name. But basically, if we do use Solar Wind. Uh, so yeah, we use Soul Wind, and then we get into a certain low gravity state. And we can actually, if we kick and attack, we can maintain that, that low gravity state and get a lot of height. Anyway, uh, we're on the final boss of the game, so yeah. Princess, uh, a lot of this fight is RNG, uh, and the strat is basically we're gonna keep charging our strike break, because it deals a lot of damage. And then we're gonna do a ground slam, two attacks, and try to get another charge break hit. Like so, so that's basically how it's done. And then, of course, we can do that with every attack. Like, sometimes I would have to, like, if she does the spinning Beyblade attack, I can, like, jump over her, basically. Nice, that's a... So if she does a melee attack, you can get, like, an extra strike break hit and a few extra hits in, which is nice because She's actually not gonna get staggered during the during the strike break. Anyway, this run is almost over. Like she doesn't have much HP left. So I'm gonna finish Princess, and I'm gonna quickly swap to the version of the game to do the time trials. There we go. That's it. That's game. So I'm gonna I'm actually gonna just let this play out. So this is like the only piece of the lore. Uh, Available, like this dialogue. Uh, don't ask me, I don't get the lore of this game. So I'm just gonna mesh this text. And then I'm going to quickly set up uh, the time trial, so uh, it's a perfect time if there are more messages to be read while I'm setting this up. There are no new donations, but I can give an update to the targets that we um, have for the Star Wars Battlefront 2. We are $125 towards the 20, uh, $250 goal. So if you want to see that uh, later this day, um, definitely donate towards it. And also the Paris Marseille Racing, the curse controller, convinced some people to donate towards that. We are $65 into the $250 um, donation target. So um, that uh, controller definitely convinced some people. And if you want to see that happening, donate towards it. And in a general um, uh, message, uh, we are less than $400 towards $10,000 donation uh, in general. Um, so if we can get to the 10K um, later today or soon anyway, um, definitely donate so that we can see that happen. And good luck with the incentive now. Thank you. So I'm going to do the first time trial here. It's just like the most straightforward one where it's only six targets. And basically I'm just going to get up here and that's it like it's a very very fast one uh, I have uh, a save file dedicated for each one of them so that's like the very easy straightforward one then there's one here where and I would say this is the trickiest one actually so I'm doing like the easiest one and then hardest one followed right after because this is like easily the most punishing time trial because just getting up here is very hard so I'm gonna just try to get here so wind and then I'm gonna do like a kick here to get up to this one and then this is a very precise jump got it oh yeah that, that's what i was talking about now climbing all the way up is like really really hard the the kicks have disappointed me i was expecting something else to happen but it didn't happen gonna try this again yeah this is like the worst time trial i I absolutely hate this one. I think I'll just go the safe way. I can try to get here, then I can try this. Oh god. Yeah, this one is just awful. Okay, I'll just restart it honestly. I feel like I can make I can do a better job. Start. This part is the same. Okay, there. Now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the ledge grabs are so disappointing because sometimes they just said no. I'm gonna go for that strat again just because it's so weird.
Yeah, I'm just trying to think, well, like, what's the best course of action here? Because there really is nothing you can do. Okay, there, then I can try get up here. Oh, God. Yeah, I'll try this. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll go for the six strat again, just because I feel it just even better. And I accidentally exited the time trial. Yeah, this one is just awful. You and yeah, I would rather run with comics right now. <laughs> okay, finally got it. Nice, dude. Yeah. Okay, that's the end of the second time trial and the worst one <laughs> by far. Don't do this one, please. <laughs> Okay, we're going into something uh, a little bit more relaxed, I guess. Which is the... Which is this... This is the Sansa Keep Time Trial, and it's basically located, like, right behind the throne room. Uh, it's very well hidden. So, right here. Also, one thing to note with Solar Wind is that... We can't actually do, like... One disadvantage of the Solar Wind is that we cannot do... The... Oh, my, my, I lost my Todd there, completely. But yeah, with Solar Wind, we actually can do like slide hops in place. We actually like that's like one disadvantage of it, is that we can't do a slide hop in place. We actually have to like get a bit of distance and then get a, a slide hop out of the momentum or well, the lane. So like I will do Solar Wind and then I would have to wait to lane. So that's why you're moving backwards on these platforms first before jumping off the edge, so that you have the space to uh, execute the jump, I'm imagining. Yeah, exactly. Meanwhile, I can, with like slide, I can just go from like the standstill. Anyway, uh, sometimes trials have like, uh, you have to hit the points like a certain order. This one, for example, you can like go in any order you want. But I'm just, as you know, following the fastest route imaginable. So I'm gonna fall off here and just hit this last one and that's basically the fourth one. On to the fifth one. Okay, this is the library one. This one is also like very, very, very it's a very, very like short one, but it's a very nice one. It's like right at the top here. Yeah, so this is like only eight uh, points. Some, and I think like the biggest one is like 16. Which is like the very last one I'm gonna do. And then get that one. That's like the pretty much the alternative. I don't do this like the most optimal way because I didn't really have much time to prepare these. So I but I'm trying my best. Anyway, this is also one of the most open ones because this is a very open area and there's like, yeah, 14 to, to collect and we visit like a lot of this place. It's run, we don't really like get to visit like this, explore this place much, but there's like a lot of like different collectibles here that are really, really nice. But we don't really pick them up. That's what the 100% run is for. run is like very very sick as well that's like my next category I want to run once I'm done with all abilities because it's basically just uh, to put it bluntly it's all abilities and steroids then there's also the any percent category which I personally do not find as interesting because you don't collect as much stuff and you don't do like that many sick stuff with it because uh, the amount of abilities you have is also just limited you pretty much just use slide and plank general for the whole run, which I think is not like the display of everything this game can do. And that's the fifth time trial. Uh, so, oh no, never mind, that was the sixth one. I skip one by accident, remind me. I think, like, uh, wait, did I get everything? So it was like one, two, three, four. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fine, this is the seventh time trial. This one, sadly, uh, I need to like make a bit of a detour, I guess, to get to it. Go 
I'm gonna do here is get out. Here I'm gonna get a lab grab, which restores. So one thing I didn't mention is the kick ability we pick up gives us uh, access to do three kicks in total, and we can also pick up like one thing which gives us uh, well, one item which gives us like the which allows us to kick four times. Then after that, oh, that's really strange. That's a really strange thing to mess up. Luckily. Get back there like really quickly. Hmm. Yeah, this is going a little bit rough. So after this one, there's like one more time trial left, and then we're done. Okay. Uh. I just have to salvage that. What a nice save. Yeah, learning backups in this game is also very important because things can because the movement is just so precise. And things can go south like really easily. Oh, uh, another thing. Yeah, <laughs> just just like that. <laughs> yeah. And I feel exactly. like this, this is one of those games where it's so movement heavy that it can be hard to even tell like what's the backup <laughs> and what's actually like yeah. the fastest way to do it, just because the movement is so like you can do a lot of it anywhere. I go a bit safe here, do that, and then. Oh, I did not get the uh, where I want to get, so yeah. That's the seventh time trial and time for the final one. We're gonna slightly overestimate, but that's alright. <clears throat> I think this should be done in like a minute, so we'll be ready in the time. <clears throat> and this is uh basically the last time trial is so for some of them you have to like hit the levers to unlock them and some are just like out in the open, so you can just <clears throat> get to them like much easier. Yeah, this is the last one. Can I say that? Nope. Sad. Okay, so, the strat is get over to this one. I can just go in here. That was what I intended to do. But basically, sometimes I'll just gener generate like these extra platforms. And, we c and just the... Uh, Collectibles are just placed on them. Oh, that's yeah. rough. With these as well, I noticed that in this one, you can kind of collect them in any order, whereas there was one where it seemed like they had to be collected in a specific order. Yeah, I mentioned that. So certain time trials, you like how to like collect the collectibles in like a very specific order. And then in some of them, you can just go in like any order you want. And be ready, this is the last token, because this is going to be time. Time. So yeah, that was Pseudo Regalia. Uh, I did the all abilities, uh, no all bounce run, uh, and then completed all eight time trials the game has to offer on its latest update. Uh, not the best display of the run, I, I feel like I've done this much better, but oh, I tried my best. Uh, so yeah, a few uh, last words before I end it is, uh, want to speed on the game, there is the Discord for every game made by the dev of Pseudo Regalia. It's all combined to one Discord server, but Pseudo Regalia I, feel, I think is the most active game of all of them. Uh, there's two updates, uh, well, there's like multiple patches, but full gold and map updates are like the two most common ones. Map update is uh, slightly bit easier in terms of tech and it's slightly bit more generous, but the full gold is harder, but also has more broken tech, it's a lot more fun. Yeah, uh, that is it pretty much from my side. Shoutouts to the community, uh, shoutouts to Sin and Yoani who helped me with the commentary. Uh, I want to shout out uh, Talent and the Color of Green, and that is all from me. Uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you.